D-Dub on the beat Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready Brown incarceration, got my people living daily Gang wars back to back to the home is where they sent me Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready What's up, little daddy? What's up, little daddy? Oh, is that time for another video? I got you guys Baby just woke up Kept us up all night But hey, let's keep him up with another YouTube video I got you guys Hey, little daddy. Well, now that we put little homie in his little chair so I can have some me time, YouTube time, me and you time, hey, you already know. I hope everybody's having a productive day for the blessing. Like I always say, it's one live, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. With that being said, let's get into another topic, another video, another controversial issue, another one of my subscriber questions. You already know, though. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment, let me know what you think in the comment section, plus hit the links in the description. Just so you guys know, right, I have to pass two online classes, get my certificates, submit them. I have to pass a physical, a 45-pound backpack, and walk two miles under 45 minutes. And this, this year, hopefully, if it's God's plan and I work very hard, I'll be a firefighter. I'll be fighting fighters for five months. So that's going to be crazy if I get to introduce that to my YouTube channel. I'll be out there in a wildfire chasing down Smokey the Bear, trying to save him, you know, find Red Riding Hood, deliver her to safety. That'd be awesome to see my little fire gear. I don't know, man. I just I just applied and they 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 I I, I met the qualifications. They say, you know, pass the test, take the class, pass the class, and you're in. So wish me luck. Subscriber asked me this. What are some of the preconceived notions that you had about the NF and NR before you joined the regiment and how have those opinions you had in the beginning changed? Mind you, the way I was exposed to it before I actually joined the regiment, you know, you watch American Me, you see how it was organized. You see all the power. You see how these individuals were in a prison cell, extending their hand out to the streets, controlling, controlling the streets, gathering all these foot soldiers, having them work for them. Vadios taking over different Vadios and Vadios paying taxes. It looked like one big monopoly board of people just getting big money. Everything I read about the NF in the beginning, that a lot of them were military minded. A lot of them had fought the, you know, the Korean War and World War II or something like that. And that's what the documents that were confiscated from IGI in the 50s and 60s and 70s on the and, and criminally profiling these individuals that's what i had learned when i had stole that packet from cya the it was like a gang documentation of everything about nuestra familia then i started reading up on it was a it was the 1992 san jose indictments these individuals got out had a bnl list went around the cities just knocking people down and a lot of these individuals like silent and all them uh lucky hot wheels everybody they were all carnales putting in work. They all made it to the streets and were fulfilling these organizational agendas that were taking place in prison. In that pamphlet that I stole, I had, it had the COC, what the regiments looked like, how the regiments were divided. All I could think of was like, man, this is like some real life Italian mafia stuff. You know, we had bosses for different cities. Everything was about money. It was a monopoly of money monetary gain taking over the streets so i got so fascinated by watching italian mafia movies you know i watched al capone untouchables i watched goodfellas casino donnie brosco trust me i watched them all when i was a kid I, that was the preconceived notion that i received is that these individuals were highly sophisticated in, in that nature I didn't know the depths of it yet because I was still a kid. I was still banging. I was just running the streets. All I knew was, you know, some order came from the top and somebody from my hood came to us, said, hey, let's take care of it. We did. Orders went back to the top saying it was completed. I wanted to know who those big individuals were. I wanted to know what these organizations were really about. I wanted to know how it was possible that one man could sit in a cell at his desk and just play chess with the streets. And make all these powerful po political moves and just move mountains. When I got out in 2005 and, and a lot of carnales were out there, like I said, you know, I, 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 got, to, I got to do stuff with Silver. You know what I mean? He, he portrayed himself like a mob boss, the way he conducted himself. Robert Palomino, Beto from Visa. Different story, kind of weird, but what he said went. 
And and one thing I know about uh, Robert, he had access to a lot of money. He made a lot of foot soldiers, and I've seen it firsthand, collect a lot of money for him, deliver it to him. He had access to a lot of money. Charlie Brown was another one from Fresno. Trini from Early Mart was another individual. Even I even seen the power that Weddle T had, the new flower. I got to see it firsthand how much this individual can do damage to the streets and how much people gravitated toward these individuals. See, that's the preconceived notion that I, I settled for and then it changed my perspective once I worked for them. Is that how is the individuals can actually just put their foot down, say something, and not be combated, not be confronted. People will follow through these individuals' orders faithfully. So these individuals, no matter whatever they conceived in their mind, whatever they wanted to get done, there was a possibility that they would get it done. It's like they knew the art of manipulation. It's like they had the psychological warfare to persuade the people to do what they wanted to do. So I looked at these individuals like, man, these got to be like some real life Italian mafia bosses. After, after going to all the spots that I know he kicked it at, you know what I mean? It was, I don't, I, there was the comparison that wasn't the same after all. A lot of these caralas like Baki's, his house was nice. Little pool in the backyard. But I think it's a house that nowadays when I see people, regular civilians have better houses than that or a house just like that. So it wasn't nothing major. Uh, Bubbles' house, Bubbles' little stash spots, just beat up little trap houses. You know, he had access to like four or five different trap houses. The houses he stayed in weren't even all that, weren't even luxurious. Of course, I didn't think that, you know, the street regimens were making millions on top of what the Italian mafia was doing. But what I was told was when the first compilation came out of the dark room, which was G.U.N., the first one and the second one, named after Gerald Cuete Rubacaba, that pretty much all that money went to a trust fund. People told me before I made it to the penal system and while I was in prison reading up on, it only outlines the dark room familia history in the NF's Historia, not the Norteños with Stata Historia. It's only the big homies, but I got to read it a few times. They outlined everything on how the dark room paid them, who was working from, who had control of it, what Carnal was controlling the, the record label, where this money went to, who ran off with the money, how much money has went missing, all the racketeering. Like after reading that and being exposed to that, I was like, man, there, there, there's big, powerful moves like going on behind the curtains, behind the scenes, behind these smoke and mirrors that we really don't see. But we're too busy on the main lines fighting one another, hurting one another, going at it with Southerners, going at it with whites, going at it with blacks. While these big organizations are like, right, you guys can go. We're going to go take care of the business aspect. So these organizations, they are a one big corporate business that, that, is, that is privatized and profits only from its people. So the majority of the people, we're going to struggle. We're going to go through it. We're going to fight for all, these re for all this revenue and all this production and all this activity and make the biggest sacrifices only for the individuals on top to get rich. No different from what you see in America. See, that was the preconceived notion. I thought we were all going to get rich. I thought we were all going to be pulling up in limousines and ties. And I would see these big carnales come out here. And they got low riders. They got big houses. They got... Tons and tons of access to substances and dope in a, in a warehouse like you would see on the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy. But that wasn't the case. Yeah, they move big weight. They do infiltrate businesses. They do extort businesses. But oftentimes it lasts only so long and then they get caught. Like the two carnales that were from Delano that got caught moving that U-Haul from Southern California past Bakersfield trying to take it up north to Modesto and got busted with a whole U-Haul full of meth. You know, you look at those kind of incidences and you start to realize like, man, you know, there's powerful moves that could be made. It's just a matter of you either getting away with it or if you get caught with it, you're going to go down like, hey, bro, I got a federal case pending for transferring over interstate lines. So I looked at it like that from that angle. And so I started getting in the mix of it and I started realizing like all the money that I was collecting, all the money that I seen a lot of these squad members collecting. It was pretty much chump change. I didn't get to see it on a, on, a, on a mass scale, on a big scale, like you see in some of these indictments and you see in some of these federal cases and some of these carnales that are, that are outlined in, uh, you know, the Colorado Florence Ma uh, Maximum Security. If you read their documents and their paperwork, it makes it seem like these individuals were making big criminal moves, conspiracy, racketeering, extortion. But in all reality, 
it's not as big as it seems. And I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry if I'm offending a lot of people. Hey, if I extort this individual for a couple hundred dollars a, a month for like a whole year and then I, I catch a case for it. You know, obviously the federal case and the, and the, and the documentation and the way it's going to be portrayed by the DA is going to make it seem like, man, we extorted this dude for hundreds and thousands of dollars. You know, it was nothing compared to what the Black Hand did to Edward James almost. But in the paperwork, it looks like, oh, man, he was he was doing racketeering. He was extorting hella people. He probably made hundreds of thousands of dollars. When in reality, it was a couple hundred bucks a month. Biggest household bank I've seen in prison was a report that I received from Soledad, the level three. They had over 28000 And that bank was under investigation in that yard because the individual that had the household bank his old lady was dipping in, buying herself like shoes. I think she got herself a new Jaguar car, used some of that money and was trying to put it back without his knowledge. And that individual wanted to get putting on investigation. So when I seen one facility, one yard making $28,000 just sitting there, I can only imagine what was being given to the carnales. So yeah, the, 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 it's, it's a very lucrative business. And the homies are trying to establish that as an organization in resemblance to the Italian mafia. But it's not on the it's not on a grand scale like I, I like I preconceived in the beginning. You know, I seen uh, Robert Palomino, the Carnal from Visa. I seen him pulling up in some just beat up buckets, some regular Honda Civics, uh, a, a tore down truck that belonged to him. You know, I think with that kind of money and that kind of access to money, what are you doing with it? I understand you might not invest none of it in yourself because it's going to a lot of bigger political figures in the pen and to business ventures but on the same token you this is your money you were the street you were the you were the regiment commander take care of yourself a little bit sometimes i seen robert palomino walking in and we'd offer him a ride he wouldn't want to ride because he would say the feds are watching him he didn't want to be with nobody he didn't want to be around nobody so i looked at it like yeah man we were it was a business venture the organization was business based but a lot of these individuals a lot of these carnales that were out here on the streets are all are in the pen right now doing life so it's like you can be as powerful as you want to be in a prison cell, but a lot of these Italian mafia bosses, a lot of them went 20, 30 years without seeing the prison cell. They're owning construction business, making millions upon millions a year. Look at the New Jersey uh, mafia crime family. The one that got busted like five, five years ago. One mafia dude, one Italian mafia dude, he was just a captain. He wasn't even in the high ranks. He was a captain. He got busted with 45 members. He got busted with a million dollars cash in his house just sitting there. So now, are we doing it on that grand scale? Absolutely not, but that's what I thought in the beginning. I thought when these, these carnales would go to different hoods and collect their little bit of money and tell these a bunch of solalos what to do, you know, I looked at it like, man, these are powerful dudes trying to, trying to run the state of California, trying to take over all California. But when the carnales were gone, oftentimes, a lot of these foot soldiers, a lot of these solalos, a lot of this manpower didn't really follow the rules unless they were under supervision. Unless somebody was scrutinizing their behavior. Everything went back to normal. They only took it serious when a carnal was present or a hermano at the time that had status who was in, responsible for the regiment or who was in control for certain parts of the regions. They would acknowledge them. But like I said, even when they weren't present, a lot of these foot soldiers went about their business. I was the same way. When I was around Bubbles, I straightened my act out. But when he wasn't around him and I was around a lot of homies from VCP or East Alvarez or West Alvarez or from my hood, I acted a donkey. I broke the rules, broke bond number four. I don't know how many times. Like I said, I've been fined plenty of times for messing with a homie's old lady or prima or sister, whatever. I've done that plenty of times. So it's like these, these individuals who want to be bosses and take over the streets and become carnales or are carnales in hopes of structuring the streets with these regiments. You know, their mind frame is where they're supposed to be. It's where it's supposed to be, should I say. But you can't control a big majority of the population who are northern Chicanos, who are Chicanos from up north, who represent the end, but don't really care about the politics. It didn't turn out the way I thought it was in the beginning. If you actually read Bubbles indictment, you realize that he didn't have a lot of manpower working for him. There was only a handful of us that did it. Every, every carnal that I've seen have manpower working for him, that his squad was very few, eight to ten members. And oftentimes, if the members went to county jail, their membership was revoked. Only They couldn't ask nothing from the street regiment unless they come out or unless they reported to a facility and they sent them with uh, instructions to report to this regiment. 
So once you work for a regiment and once you get locked up, you're rendered useless. You don't have access to those funds. You can't ask, you can't ask the street regiment, hey, man, I just did this holly for you, but I got busted for it. Like, can I get a couple hundred dollars on my books? Absolutely not. That money is for the streets. That money is for other business ventures that belong to the carnales. So at the end of the day, when you look at the Italian mafia, a lot of these dudes work for these bosses, but they had access. They had access to politicians, access to judges, access to lawyers, access to paid off bail bondsmen, access to whatever. You could turn to your boss if you're an Italian mafia member and ask for a lot of things and get granted. Obviously, you're going to pay it back or you're going to do something in return. But they had so much more established to provide for their foot soldiers if their foot soldiers need help. That wasn't the case with us. That was another preconceived notion that changed later on. We couldn't ask the street regiment for nothing. The street regiments, sometimes they would rent out the mechanics. You'd have to literally go rent it out. In Tulare, we had a, a, a house, can't say the name, a mattress. Underneath the mattress, had a bunch of them. You had to rent it out. Then you had to bring it back at a such and such time or you will be fine. Taken, and then you'll lose your privileges or you could be stripped and beat down. On the regimen, the one I worked with in Solari. So imagine that you want to go put in work, you need to go do this, but you need access to this. The regimen is like, okay, but here, give me two hundred dollars tonight. Every night that you have it, it's another two hundred dollars. Isn't that money that you've been taxing these videos from in the beginning supposed to be funding these weapons so we can have access to these weapons? It's not the case. It's things like that. A lot of preconceived notions that I had in the beginning. I was fascinated with, and it all changed because I realized that nobody benefits other than the carnales. And when there's no carnales presence on the streets, you guys don't have the slightest clue how much more difficult it is for these carnales that are locked up in the pen to run these regiments and create a, a strong infrastructure that they can maintain. They lose a firm grip on these street regimens if there's no carnales present out here or there's nobody of strong influence that people will abide by and conform to. That's the harsh reality of it. So I hope you answered your question to the best of my ability. I didn't want to expose way too much, but you know I did the best I could to answer this question. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.